it, and that's, now that's the first thing you write down in your notes. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, what we talked about last class period was we talked about certain lines, right? And we said, hey, if you have lines, these are what we call lines. A lot of times we talked about parallel lines. But then we said, hey, those lines were cut by a special type of line. Do you remember what we called that? You weren't here. Trans. Transversal. Yeah. Transversal. Then what we had is we had a special type of, so what was so nice about the transversal, all right, was that it created angles, right? We had angle one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? And then we talked about, we're like, well, now there's a certain type. We have um, a lot of different now. And then, so the other thing we talked about is then we have interior angles, right? And then we have exterior. Right? You guys remember when we had our two lines? And then we had a transversal. When we had that transversal, it created kind of two intersecting lines. And then what we had was intersecting lines, and or I'm sorry, interior now and exterior. And what we talked about was there's a relationship between our lines. So let's go back through our relationship. The first one we talked about was consecutive interior angles. So I'm just going to write these down. And if you already write them, keep writing them down. Go around that way. Consecutive interior angles. Um, if you guys remember consecutive interior angles, we had would be angle 3 and angle 5, angle 4 and angle 6, right? The next one we talked about was alternate interior angles. Now remember alternate interior angles. Remember these interior, we're only talking about angles that are in the interior. Alternate interior angles were ones, so you notice that the consecutive are on the same side of the transversal. Right, Damon and Sam? But when they're alternating, now they're on opposite sides of the transversal. Sam, you probably just, if you just want to switch over to that side, that would be much easier than turn around. So then you have three and six, four and five. So your alternate interior angles were angle three and angle six and angle four and angle five. So I'm going over this again. I know I went over this last class period, but I'm going over this again um, just to make sure you guys can reiterate because we're going to be using these angles all year. All right. So it's really important that you guys are able to have as many notes for these as you have possible um, and also to be able to write these down. So we talked about interior angles, consecutive interior angles. Then we got to also exterior, uh, alternate exterior angles. Bless you. So on alternate exterior angles, we talked about, now we're talking about only exterior angles. So we have angle 1 and angle 8 and angle 7 and angle 2. Those are our alternate exterior angles. Okay. And then the last one was corresponding. And when we talked about corresponding angles, what we saw is corresponding angles are in each little intersection are in the exact same kind of position of them. So we could say that 3 and 7 are corresponding angles. 1 and 5, 2 and 6, 4 and 8. So we had a lot of these. 1 and 5. Three or angle three and angle seven. We have angle two and angle six. And we have angle four and angle eight. All right. So what I'm going to do, ladies and gentlemen, is I'm going to kind of go through each one of these different theorems that we're going to have. Um, because all we really did was just said, hey, these are what these angles name, right? 
These are like some special names. We already know vertical angles. We already talked about vertical angles, so I'm not going to go back over that. Remember, vertical angles are angles that are created by intersecting lines that share a vertex and do not share a side. So two and three are vertical. One and four are vertical. Five and eight are vertical. Seven and six are vertical, right? Yes, vertical angles across from each other. They share the same vertex, do not share any sides. We also talked about supplementary angles, angles that add up to 180. In this case, we have a special type of supplementary angle, which we call a linear pair, where you can say that 1 and 2 are supplementary, 3 and 4 are supplementary, 2 and 4 are supplementary, 1 and 3 are supplementary, right? Because those two lines or those two angles are adjacent and they create a line. So they're what we call a linear pair. And linear pairs are su supplementary, that which means they add up to 180, 180, 180, 180, 180, supplementary 180, supplementary 180, supplementary 180. So when you have these two angles that create a line, we remember they're going to be up to 180. All right. So last class period, I think I went over if it was a parallel line or not, but um, or your two lines, but it doesn't matter. All we're doing is we're naming them. But now, ladies and gentlemen, to go through these theorems, what we're going to do is, if you guys remember, I talked about parallel lines, and we only know that two lines are parallel when they're drawn if they have what? Does anybody remember? They have to have what to make sure that they're parallel? How do we show that they're parallel? Yeah? Yeah, those little arrows, right? That now tells me that those lines are going to extend indefinitely and never cross, intersect, touch each other, right? They're going to be going at the same slope or the same distance between each other forever and ever. So now if we cut these by a transversal, all right, and I'm just going to keep the same angles, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. But what I want you guys to understand is when we have parallel lines, when we have parallel lines, our relationship between our angles is special. Yes? No, it could be straight. It could be perpendicular. Um, so here's what happens, all right? When you guys have consecutive interior angles, when you have parallel, this only occurs when you have parallel lines. So that's why we're going to the set. Last class period, we just learned how to name them, right? And that's what your homework was on. Um, this class period, we're going to say, when you have consecutive interior angles, consecutive interior angles add up to 180. Example, measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 5 equals 180 degrees. So what that's saying is if you know that two angles, if you know you have parallel lines and you have, and you have two angles that add, and you have two angles that are consecutive interior, you know the measures of those are going to add up to 180 degrees. Um, Alternate interior angles, 4 and 5. Alternate interior angles are equal in measure. So that means they're the exact same value. So what that means, if I was going to give you an example, the measure of angle 3 is equal to the measure of angle 6. Hmm. So that means the angles are measured. So if you can determine, Damon, that you have two angles that are equal, all right, or I'm sorry, if you have two angles from parallel lines that are alternate interior, you know their measures are equal to each other. Alternate exterior angles are also equal. So my example here is the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 8. So that means if I know I have parallel lines and a transversal, and I can determine what two angles are alternate exterior, I know that their measures are equal in value. All right. And the last one, corresponding angles, angle 1, angle 5, angle 3, angle 7. Um, corresponding angles, let's just look at 3 and 7, those are also equal. are equal in measure. So therefore, 
the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 5. All right? Now, vertical angles. Mario, do you remember what the measure of vertical angles are? Are they equal or, or at what have to 180 or 90? Do you remember what vertical angles are? You don't remember? Just off the top of your head. Does anybody remember what vertical angles are? Yes? They're congruent. So they're equal in measure, right? So just another little FYI, if you guys are just want to write, make sure you have all this stuff in. Vertical angles, I'm not going to write down all the vertical angles, but are, those are also equal to in measure. We've already gone over examples of vertical angles. Um, but ex vertical angles, you could just say an example of vertical angles is the measure of angle 5 is equal to the measure of angle 8. Remember, vertical angles are across from each other, I think. So you might want to write that down, one down so you can get that. And then remember, let's just write down supplementary again, just so we can remember this, Camelo. So supplementary. And we know supplementary add up to 180. And so far, let's just talk about supplementary angles that are a linear pair. We can see that we have a linear pair of angle 1 and angle 2. So my example could be an example is measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equals 180 degrees. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have covered so far um, in this class and the, or so far with our angle relationships. The main important thing I want you guys to understand is, the main important thing I want you to understand, please write this down. We're going to talk about the converse of these in a second. But these rules, these theorems do not apply if we do not have parallel lines. So you must have parallel lines for us to apply these theorems. All right? OK? OK. Sam, I'm going to need you to sit in a seat where you can see the board.